The RDNA 4 GPUs came alongside with AMD's FSR4 and if you are aware of the recent developments of the upscaling technologies like RDNA, DLSS and XESS, then you might also know that AMD specifically released FSR4 only for RX 9000 GPUs. Even though AMD does have plans to expand FSR4 to previous gen GPUs like the RX 7000, currently the FSR4 isn't supported on these. However, one guy was able to turn it on on his RX 7000 GPU and he shared how it went on a reddit thread. The user who goes by the username virtualcobbler9930 showed how one can turn on FSR4 on an RX 7000 GPU through using OptiScaler tool. It's basically a tool that can replace the built-in upscaling technology in a game like DLSS4, FSR2 and XCSS and through a particular command and injecting some DLL files, the user was able to get FSR4 working in multiple games. As you can see, he made FSR4 possible on an RX 7900 XT X and used Linux operating system but this is reportedly also possible in Windows. The comparison he showed between FSR4 and FSR3 shows how the former is able to improve the image quality noticeably in games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Oblivion Remastered. He tested Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K with FSR on the quality preset and one can see that the image quality is now sharper with things like fan and its vents being more detailed than before. The signboard also showed clearer text than with FSR3 and this is also seen in other games like Oblivion where elements like the sword and the Oblivion gate showed higher details. The ground details were also a bit sharper and even though he reports some artifacts on the trees, the image quality overall was more stable and less shimmery than with FSR 3. Now this transition to FSR4 did have a negative impact on the performance and it's expected since RX 7000 GPUs don't support FSR4 officially. Cyberpunk took a big hit in performance and dropped from 85 FPS to just 56 average FPS. Oblivion saw a similar performance regression and went from 46 to 36 FPS. And the same was seen in Marvel Rivals where the performance dropped from 74 to just 51 FPS. So basically with RX 7000 series if you have to choose between FSR3 and FSR4, you will have to compromise on either the performance or the visual quality. Anywhere from 20 to 30 percent performance drop is expected, but even with the performance regression, the FSR4 seems to be a better option than the native resolution since you are gaining performance with better visual quality. However, if high frame rates are essential for you, then it's better to stick with the FSR 3.1 and wait for AMD to provide FSR4 support to the RX 7000 GPUs. Next we have the AMD's UDNA architecture reportedly being the one that will power the next gen gaming consoles such as PlayStation 6 and Xbox. AMD's UDNA basically combines both CDNA and RDNA architectures on a single chip which will take care of both gaming and professional workloads. Therefore with the deployment of UDNA architecture, the PlayStation 6 and Xbox next gen consoles will be the first to be able to execute intensive AI workloads. Now do take this report with a grain of salt as it isn't official yet, but it was reported by Kepler L2 who is a well known leaker with accurate leaks. He says that both PS6 and next gen Xbox will use the same GPU architecture and one can expect around 20% of performance uplift in rasterization per compute unit compared to RDNA 4. So this means the PlayStation 6 and next-gen Xbox console will deliver a massive boost since both PS5 Pro and Xbox Series X utilize AMD's RDNA 2 architecture with PS5 Pro being an exception with added features from RDNA 3. Moreover, it's likely that both consoles will get higher compute units than their predecessors which will further improve the gaming performance. Not only that but the UDNA architecture is expected to offer twice the ray tracing and AI performance compared to RDNA 4. So basically UDNA will be a great deal for both PC and gaming consoles, particularly for the former as it will offer an all-around performance advantage in both gaming and professional workloads. However, as far as its deployment is concerned, the desktop Zen 6 lineup won't probably get it, but the mobile Zen 6 lineup which is commonly known as Medusa Point is rumored to be the first to bring UDNA on board. UDNA will soon be deployed on the next gen RX 10,000 series GPUs and while the release date isn't yet confirmed, the earliest one can expect them is before the end of this year. Moving forward, we have a lot of fake hardware being circulated in the market. While this isn't new as we have seen fake GPUs and CPUs being sold even on major retailers like Amazon, the RTX 1590 and Ryzen 9800X 3D are its latest victims. One of the recent cases showed that some sellers are selling RTX 5090 with no GPU chip at all. In this particular case, a user bought Zotac RTX 5090 for $2,000 
thinking it was cheap only to find that his GPU didn't even have the substrate and the GPU die. Moreover, the VRAM modules were also completely ripped off from the PCB and that was the reason why the GPU didn't work. Zotac RTX 5090 seemed to be affected the most from such cases and we have seen recently that even new egg got a batch of over 30 such GPUs where the boxes didn't even have the cards but they were either filled with backpacks or with rice and pasta. While scammers usually target expensive components like RTX 5090, CPUs are victims too. A few cases of fake MD's Ryzen 9800X 3D have been reported in the past few weeks and the latest one was investigated by Gamers Nexus. As investigated by Steve, the CPU substrate did not even have the CCD and the IO dies, and the PCB didn't even have the soldering points. It was bought by a user from Amazon and it turned out that the scammer used a dummy PCB to stick a custom IHS on it which had several differences when compared to the real Ryzen 9800X 3D CPU. The SMD components and their orientation didn't match the ones on a real sample and there were many obvious differences on the IHS writings as well. Good thing is that such components can be easily returned but it's still a concern for customers who spend hundreds of dollars just to get scammed. Well there is no need to panic because these are rare occurrences and there are ways through which you can identify a fake part like cross checking the serial number on the component and box and things like that. So that wraps up today's video, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did then subscribe to the channel for keeping yourself aware with the latest PC hardware stories and I will see you in the next one.